Boaters, boaters, this is Paulie from All Docked Up. Thursday night, podcast night. My main man, Captain Buzz. Hey, Captain Buzz here. How's everybody doing tonight? Buzzword. <laughs> we got some good stuff tonight, Paulie. It's going to be an awesome night. It, it is. It is. So I think that, hold on, let's start, we got to start it off right. The question is, how you doing? I, I'm doing all right. You I mean, right? dude, I covered <laughs> some ground today, boy. I'll tell you what. We were working the market, um, you know, opening up all docked up in Ken Island. It was oh, awesome. Yeah. Winds blowing like crazy. Storms coming in from Elsa. I'm telling you what, it was uh, it was a fun day. But we were, we were signing up vendors. We had a lot of fun. There was a lot of excitement in the air. It was an awesome day. We'll talk about more. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. So let, for our boaters bites, let's get into that just for a moment. Let's talk food, everybody, because well, food's always on the mind. So I know, you, I know you've got a story, and I didn't get a chance to taste it because I didn't get the invite. Yeah, that's, yeah, 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 I didn't want to talk about that. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> so, so last podcast I talked about my ribs, and they weren't, you know, they they weren't up to par. I promised that I would make another batch, going back to the old recipe for the rub. But you know, I'm still using the smoker, so I, I brought you down a, a, a rack. You're the salt fest ribs that you made. I, that almost made my blood pressure blow a head gas. Well, here. the thing is, I used a store bought, and it's I made my own, and I that's where I am, and this is. This, I'm back, dude. You tried. I'm, le- I'm leaving you this rack. I'm going to give a report back to everybody's listening. You over the 4th of July, I ate ribs that could have stopped a man you know, to go in a coronary attack over here. Well, we heard that last week. and Well, yeah, but these guys are all wondering. I'm like, yo, did Buzzy hook them up on the ribs yet? You think they're not asking? And yes, guys, I will right say there. this much. You got him. He put me uh, maybe another set of ribs in, in my Ziploc bag that we're going to murder. They're, 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 you're going to like those. I'm, I'm, I'm back. I promise you I'm back. So, but I know you were on the other dock over the uh, the last weekend, and you did some cooking of yourself and made some friends over there. What'd you do? Oh, I'll tell you what. It was awesome. So, went to the seafood shack, grabbed a ton of fish, shrimp, scallops, grocery store, white wine, garlic, um, you know, some nice fresh Italian parsley. And I, and made I, saw, it- I saw you grabbing a wok from somebody. Well, yeah. Well, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, and you got to cook for a lot of people. I'm not judging you. I'm sauteing shrimp and scallops on the dock. How you doing? I'm working with an electric skillet because you're not supposed to use open flame on a dock. If you're out on the hook, that's another story. Good point. So we're sauteing, sauteing. It was a blast. The people all around me on my dock were like, "Paulie, we've never ate scallops like that before." So didn't I hear fresh Italian parsley? Oh, my bad. Forgive me. Yeah, uh, a little bit. You get fresh shrimp, fresh scallops, olive oil, fresh garlic. Get that garlic nice and brown. Saute your shrimp and your scallops. Go ahead and hit it with a nice shot of white wine. Saute it nice and heavy. Hit it with that white wine. Oh, it's beautiful. Flamage a little bit. Only we didn't have gas on the dock. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, my God. it It was good. Then you put some clam juice in there, let her simmer. Look at you. Top it with Italian fresh parsley. Do it over pasta. Son of my bitch. <laughs> it's a goodie. Oh, that All was right. a goodie. Maybe, name, maybe next year I'll get the invite. I have know. no idea how you didn't smell. You were sitting on top of the hill playing cornhole. I saw you, your big head. You know what I mean? And I'm like, he's playing cornhole. How did you not smell garlic? I had, I must have had a half, three quarters of a pound of garlic. Everybody's <laughs> breath was stinking. But I'll tell you what, we ate really good on the dock on the 4th of July. Oh, that's awesome. All right, well, let's, let's, uh, let me get into my captain's briefing. <clears throat> and, uh, and it's simple. It's, it's to make yourself a captain's book, you know. And you know me, Paulie. I'm, I'm over the top. I'm, this I'm, is a B boy over here. Oh, he is crazy. Yeah, you're completely organized. It's so, beautiful. So I make, I have a captain's book and it's got memory aids and it's got navigation aids and it's got aids to the navigation system charts from the, uh, and, and graphs and, and aids from the coast guard. It's got the coast guard auxiliary ve- vessel safety check. So I know what to expect. I've got maps from marinas that I've been to in the past. So I know where I'm going when they, when I call them for the radio and they give me a slip number. You got the book. I got the book. And you got so, the book. And then I've got notes on things and then, and then cheats and, and instructions on how to work the VHF and the uh, you know the visual distress signal. So if something were to happen to me, somebody could pick up the book. And, well, you're do- here's the thing. What are you yeah. really doing? You're documenting your boating. Yeah. Well, you're realistically, you're building the book, documenting your boating, where you've went. And I'll tell you what, that's all. This is beautiful. 
I'll tell you what, when you get this thing loaded up with five more years, we could sell this. People would love I like that idea. to be able to have something like this. Like we could give these, this is incredible. Buzzy, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you got to see this book. He's the man. <laughs> All right. So what's your detailer's briefing this week? So I, I was actually kind of caught in an interesting predicament. I watched this saber yacht, 42 foot saber yacht that unfortunately is underneath a shed cover. And unfortunately, what do you mean? I, all right. So listen, under a shed cover, boating is awesome. To, there, there's a lot of pros and cons. People talk it up a little bit more. But if you're thinking about buying a shed cover slip, okay. I want you to be aware of this. Your boat doesn't get sun beaten. It's awesome when it's raining out and you're dry. Those are pros. It's 20 degrees cooler pros. on a 100 degree day, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Those are three great things. Yeah, yeah. Detailing wise, keeping a boat clean, the spider infestation is unbelievable. Ah. And I'll tell you what, the the marina, you know, they they spray, they they had they do their due diligence to try to keep it down. The marina was making a complete effort, and that's with complete effort on their side, and it's still tough. Mm. So I was getting ready to wash this boat. So uh, you know, you're washing a customer's boat that's fully waxed, but you have spider shit stains all over the place. What yeah. do you do? If you wash it with your traditional polymer-based soap, it's not going to um, touch it. Carbon based soap, you're going to get your the boat will be clean, but you'll have stains all over the glass. What do you do? You don't want to. So the, I guess the question is here, guys, when you're washing your boat and you're removing that, do you understand? Like roll off is one of my favorite products. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah. It's what I start every boat with when I was detailing. In, in, in the beginning of the season, I rolled off your entire boat. I wanted this. It's fiberglass spotless. It kind of sets the, sets it's, the tone. It's, it's yeah. prep work Gets for the ready. glass to soak it up. Got it. And I said to the customer, I said, Barb, I'm telling you, if I physically, you know, uh, wash this boat with regular soap, I said, the stains will never come out. The customer would have been upset. They're, gonna, so they're I not going to be happy. Yeah. There was no choice. So if you're going to, if you're going to get a shed cover slip, be ready for spiders. And I'll tell you what. You, unless you have enough wax on your boat and enough ceramic wash, you know, build up mm. where it doesn't penetrate and doesn't stain, but it's very rare that I see boats that are in that awesome of condition. Okay. So, so you told her, I, you obviously use the roll off product, to get the boat clean, but it stripped all the wax that she may have been came, on. There. If that customer would have came down, I would have scrubbed the whole boat with regular soap. Yeah. The entire boat. There would be no spiders. There would be all the part, you know, all the yeah, bug parts clean, are gone. But it's not protected when it does all go the, out in the sun. Well, not of that too, but you, you lost a lot of your wax, but the stains from the spider poop, it's everywhere. And it's completely shows. It, it's all over. Yeah, that's going to so get. So how do you get that off? You are forced to use a product that's got heavy detergents in it that's going to strip your wax because regular soap will not do it. Yeah. It just won't do it. So, guys, just beware. If you're going to do yeah, it. good call. You, uh, uh, listen, there are plenty of times that I've waxed my boat over and over throughout the course of the season. I'm always adding wax. It's a lot of work. But it's. I'll tell you what, that was a tough dilemma. But as long as the customer knew what was going on, it was. there's nothing else you could have done. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that that is good. That that is good advice. That's a the, the that's detailer's a challenge. dilemma. <laughs> yeah. That's and what it, it well, is. it's a boat owner's dilemma as well. Uh, pay pay me now. Pay me later. Or continue to pay me to keep the boat nice. So, right. Buzzy, what are we talking about tonight? What do you got? Well, over there? well, we got a couple topics. The first one I want to talk about buoys. We're going to talk about the old red and green baby. We're going to talk. We're going to talk about buoys. And so, you, you you remember the red right return? So, when you're coming back from open water into uh, a river, or you know, again from open water up into a channel. You keep the red buoy on your right side, on the starboard side. Right? Roger that, that. That's the one. And the green buoy is on your port side. So a red right return. It's a, it's a great reminder on what to do, but you have to remember which way you're going, right? And know that you're you're coming from open water and going upstream, or if you will. But but let's talk a little bit more detail about about red and green buoys and and day beacons. Okay. We we call them day markers. Right? Day markers. Yeah. So for, for red buoys, they're typically shaped in what's called a nun, which has a tapered top. And uh, red buoys um, have even numbers. Now, green buoys are what is called a can. So it's got a straight, flat top. And those have odd numbers. So if, 
if you only see, if you, yeah, you can always see the color most of the time, but when you're looking at your chart and you see a, a, a uh, uh, an odd number, that's green. You see a even, even number, number you got that's red. red. Exactly, exactly. And when we talk about um, and and also some buoys are lighted and some aren't, and and I, I'm not going to go too deep into that. Matter of fact, I'm not going to go deep into that at all. Other than you can, there's a frequency when you look at your chart. You'll see it may say flashing or you know f two seconds or six seconds, and that is the flashing sequence on each of the buoys. Sure. So you can look at your chart and look at the buoy and match what you're looking at. Sure. But there's 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 different sequences of the way the light flashes, and so that requires a bit more study and and not not good for necessarily a pod. Well, that's a problem, a common problem in boating accidents in general that. There are boaters that hit A, unlit markers at nighttime because they're running entirely too fast on plane yeah. and really not understanding what's going on. Or they hit an unlit, you know, um, uh, a day marker. I mean, exactly. it, it, it's happened and it's amazing. Like, you better play close attention or you're in big trouble. That's right. That's right. So with day markers or day beacons, uh, the red are again even numbers and they're triangles and okay. that marks the channel gotcha green on the other hand always odd and they're square so you if you see the shape and maybe you can't make it the color you know that if it's square it's going to be green if it's a triangle it's going to be red so just just some hints on what to look for when you're talking about buoys and um, day beacons there's also one that i see occasionally, and it's important to understand, when you come into a channel and it maybe has a Y, okay, and so you might see a green, uh, you may see a can buoy, and if if the channel marker, right, is, it may have two different, it may have green and red on it. Okay. The preferred channel is the top color, all right? So if you're coming up a river and it forks left and right, port and starboard, and there's a buoy right in the center that is green, yellow, green. That means the preferred channel is over on the starboard side, putting the green on your port. But just another thing to think about. And so what I recommend when you build your captain's book is to print off the navigation aids from the Coast Guard, and that'll make a whole lot more sense to you. Build the book. Everybody, if you're, if you're traveling a lot, build the book. Take the time. Document your trips. Document your hours. Spend, do your due diligence and build the book. So there's a couple of other buoys that are, and these are, again, we're skimming the surface here because you can go very deep. But, but for general boating, there's what's called information and regulatory marks or buoys. And those you'll see that are, it's white and orange. I know you've seen them, right? You've seen the, you know, and they mark like if it's a danger zone, it would have a diamond, right? On on a, an orange diamond, and it'll tell you what it is. Maybe it's a it's a wreck or it's a reef or whatever. It'll tell you. If it has a circle, then that that typically is um, restricted operations. So a no wake zone, right? It's got again, it's an orange and white uh, marker with a circle. It typically tells you what not to do could be a no wake. And then there's what's called exclusion, which is a diamond with a cross, an orange cross in the center of it. And that tells you that you're not prohibited. Don't take your boat in there. That may be, um, uh, maybe it's a swimming area or maybe it's for us, you know, we have the Aberdeen Proving Ground. There's certain places you can't go for. Yeah, if you got a show, if you an ordinance, right? You can't go in there. No, right? I gotcha. And then, then there's others with orange, again, orange and white, that have a, an orange square. And those are typically informational. Like they may tell you that there's uh, something that you need to look out for. It could be a gas dock or a boat ramp. It's informational. Yeah, spend the time, do a quick little printout, understand your buoys with what you're working with. Exactly. Right. Take some time because I'll tell you what, yes, it's very in-depth, guys, and you can spend a really lot of time, but your general knowledge just put forth the effort because I'll tell you what, you're going to stay a boater. The more you know, the safer you are. 
The green. It's that simple. The red, how to look for them. The green and red day markers or day beacons. The orange buoys. And then finally, there's mooring buoys, which are white with a blue horizontal band. Some okay. of them are balls. Some of them are cans. And those are mooring buoys. So anyway, again, a lot more to learn about buoys if you choose to. And I, and I hope that you do. But just some basic knowledge on, on how to navigate through the water. So let's move to another topic. And, and uh, this is one that, that you brought up to me. And it's, it's closing up the boat. Right, yeah, what do you do? We're so here's the question. Gears here. Yeah, we're shifting gears a little bit. So at the end of the weekend, you're all you're all said and done. How do you put your boat away? You putting your mooring cover on? You're making sure all your canvas is up. What do you do? Do you um, cycle your batteries down? Do you turn your selectors, your battery selector switch off? Mm -hmm. How do you put your boat away? Do you leave your air conditioning running or do you not? Like, yeah. there's a lot of good questions, and I'll tell you what, guys. Um, you know, we had uh, one of our members. Gary sent me a, an email today and it was sending me awesome information on things like, Paulie, I don't know this. Find me this. Oh, good. And it was great. So, um, and that was one of the, the questions that he asked. He says, do you, Paulie, do you leave your air conditioner on when you leave the weekend? Well, you know, so we're getting that feedback from the listeners to tell awesome. us, yeah. like, tell me, guys, what do you want to know? <laughs> Put me to work. If that's what we got to do, whatever we got to do, ask me questions. Go to all docked up. Yeah, and, and contact us. That'd be great. That, that's yeah. great because we, we want to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. Talk to me, guys. Talk to me and Buzzy. Me and Cap will get you good. So so the question you asked, you know, um, should you cycle down your batteries and shut them off? And and so I I do, right? Uh, for, for, for a couple of reasons. And, you, you know, first of all, I don't want any DC current flowing through the boat. However, the idea of that, you know, okay, if I cycle my batteries off, what does that do? to my bilge pumps and my sw my float switches. Well, for most modern boats, the float switch is directly wired. It's hot. It's Not direct, a, I don't want to say it's directly wired, wired for batteries, batteries, but it is it is, is a hot circuit. So right, whether you, you turn, turn your batteries your off, switch, right, or you right. cycle your batteries down, you know, you got to make sure that your bilge pumps are running and take the time because I got an awesome, well, not an awesome, but yeah. Yeah, I got a really bad story to tell. I mean, uh, I had a customer call that wanted me to detail a Monterey, 24 foot, 25 foot. Okay. And that thing, literally, the engine room was completely filled. The motor was completely underwater mm. because the man did not have the boat plugged into a 30 amp short power. So, literally, his boat sank on, on his lift. Oh. Okay. It ran and ran and batteries ran. The, bug, the boat was not plugged into a short power line, 30 amp. So, the water whatever. came from the rain. Right. Oh, right. Rain it down. And uh, he was he was a very upset guy. Ouch. But I had another customer that went and turned his battery, cycled them all the way off. So he, he went down into the lazarette, opened up the door and went to turn the selector switch, the big green round, you know, switch in, in the back of your boat to off. And um, that killed his float switch. So the boat itself literally was not the bilge pump did not come on. That couldn't have been wired right. It wasn't wired properly. Oh, so right, guys, okay. make sure. The whole point of this yeah, is make point. sure that you know if, what your boat will do. Because you buy a used boat. You're not exactly sure. You pray to God that everything was wired absolutely perfectly. But don't leave that to chance. A way that you can check that is to open up your engine hatch, turn your battery selector switch to off. And both, grab both a hose. batteries. Well, no, you, know, you, <laughs> you can do that. Just reach down and yeah. pull up on the floats, which sure. you'll hear the thing whining. If it doesn't, you got a problem. It's yeah. wired wrong. Take the time, guys, to truly understand how your systems work on board. When we were in St. Michael's together, we were talking to that older couple. Mm -hmm. um, they were awesome. In their 70s, running a 55 Fleming. And he told me when you buy a Fleming, you literally go to Fleming school for two weeks. Wow. That they completely oh, I want to go you. to Fleming school. I want to go to Fleming school, too. <laughs> I'm 55. I'll do the 64. You know, almost $4 million, I'm How sure. How about that? Beautiful boat. And I'll tell you what, that, those yachts are incredible. They're gorgeous. But you go to school for, you know, you, they educate you completely on all systems on board. Oh, so when I heard that, up. when wow. I heard that, that's a boat builder that I want to yeah. be a part of. How about that? That's cool. All right, so we talked about shutting the batteries down, and and the other th two more things. Do you leave your air conditioning running? Right, you're plugged into shore power. Do you leave the air conditioning running? Now, 
and this is this is going to be personal choice, but a lot of modern boats that have a cabin with air conditioning have a panel where you can program it to come on, you know, every eight hours for 20 minutes, for example, to just pull the humidity out of the cabin. And right. Whether you from, have cruise air, whether you have marine air. Yeah. Check the actual manufacturer. Even if you don't have a manual, go download the manual. Yeah. Because yeah, there is a point. lot of dehumidify. Uh, these systems have dehumidifier settings on timers. them. Yeah. And timers and their programs that you can set in there. Me personally, I'll tell you what. The, the This was always my logic. When you have ACDC refrigerators running downstairs in your cabin, those things are cooking in a hundred plus degree cabin. If it's a hundred degrees outside, be very sure that your cabin internal temperature and the it's gonna be a is going to be a hundred and five plus. Yeah. That compressor struggles to keep hot. So on yeah, really extreme hot days, I always left my air running. And why? Because those refrigerators, whether you have your traditional apartment size ACDC refrigerator, mm -hmm. that's eight hundred and fifty nine hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And God forbid if you have a full size Dometic, I mean you're talking twenty five, three thousand dollars. I, I think what we're talking about, Paulie, is that that the boaters are going to have to make that decision for themselves. It's complete personal choice. What you're going to do is what you're going to do. Right, because it, you know it, you're you're paying for additional electric power. You are running a pump with fresh water through the boat. You know, if you have, if, if you pipe, pop a hose, you're taking a chance. Right. So, so it, it, it's a good point. And, and and look, we're for this particular topic, we're not necessarily telling you to do one or the other, but we're we're bringing it up so that you do some research and make your own decision. And and don't do don't make that decision without understanding. Yeah, just understand what exactly you're doing. Me, exactly. uh, listen. The bottom line is the air conditioner being off. It's the safest route that you can take. But that was just my personal philosophy. I mean, if you really get down to it, if nothing is running, that really yeah. is the safest mode to be, right? I mean, it's it common sense. It is. You know, but like I said, I think there's ways. And it's nice when you come down and it, if, you put it on de if you put it on dehumidifier mode on your unit and it turns itself on and off, runs for 15 minutes and shuts it off, it keeps the cabin fresh, keeps the moisture down, drains it into the air, the, you know, the pan, pan. And, yeah. and pumps it overboard. That's a good point. So one more, one more about closing the boat, and that's, you know, you're hook, hooked up to shore power. Should you leave your battery charger switch on the AC panel on? And for me, I do because I've got a smart charger, high, you know, a high tech smart. Charger. Well, you have the latest and greatest smart, uh, you know, uh, smart battery marine charger for your boat. So a tender, but see, that's yeah. that's a charger, but that's a tender. It you, is. Know, you can set a smart charger to decycle your batteries all the way down, bring them back up. They don't create a memory. You That's know what right. I mean? It, it cycles your batteries. So the new smart charger guys are, are excellent. But on my boat, 16 years old, okay, you turn I don't have off. a smart you, charger. You Mine's off. the original. Turn so yours off? I turn it off. Yeah, okay. Because I'm not, you know, I'm not sure if that physically does turn. It's It does come on and off, but... You know, we're normally in pretty good shoes, so I shut mine off. Okay. I mean, again, this is a topic where you've got to do the research. And I think it's based off the technology that you have on board. Let's That's what face I mean. it. Yeah. Just understand your equipment. So if you do not have a smart charger, look up the model and say, does it shut itself off even if you leave it in the on position? That's the only real way to go. Just understand your equipment on board, what it does, how it's wired. And, and, and don't assume anything. Yeah, then you have all your T's crossed, your I's dotted, and everything's good. That's that's a great point you make is don't assume. It's a pain in the ass. Listen, do, you know, <laughs> do boating, your research. Do and your understand research. Do your, your homework. Your be, be an educated boater. Boats are difficult. They're tough. They require a lot of care and maintenance. But what you get about being out in the open water and watching a sunset and a sunrise and the lifestyle that you get to enjoy, right. I'm sorry. It is all worth the work and the effort. Roger. It's a love of labor. We say it. Roger that. Every year, guys, when I'm buffing <laughs> this big son of a bitch, and it's, of course, it's got blue gel coat hull. It's, let me tell you how much fun that is to buffer. She is, you're, you know, very <laughs> wide beam. I, I, was, I do want to, like, javelin them with a buffer. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. All right. 
so we've got one final topic, um, and that's boy, and this this one is uh, this one's perfect for the summertime is swimming at a marina. Dude, I'll tell you, that was a big Fourth uh, yeah. of July weekend. I got a story to tell. You. Well, I go got ahead. A story to tell. You. Go ahead, and then I'll get into some of the some of the do's and don'ts. But but tell the story. So we took a ride, took a run, had the pump out, had to pick up some fuel, grabbed a cocktail. And there was a family that, you know, beautiful family, wonderful, that were swimming right off the back of, of their boat really? in a marina. Oh, and guys, man. that is an absolute no-no because electric shock drowning happens all the time. Yeah, That is a complete no-no. If any one of the boats that are physically on that dock are literally putting out a short mm. and putting direct current into the water you are in a lot of trouble. It will literally paralyze you where you are and you can't physically move your muscles and you will drown. Yeah, it, it, it's a serious thing. And, and you know, one that we certainly need to talk about. The, the couple of the challenges here that if you see someone that is being shocked in the water, your first reaction is, I, I need to I'm save I'm going to jump in and save them. But if you That's do... A yeah, that's an absolute no-no. And that's an incredibly difficult thing to What's not What's the first do? thing you do, Buzz? Tell me right now. Yeah, you're going to... Well, shut the power off. Grab every tower shut you see and start off. turning off power. Start, go to the towers that are on, lit or not, open, flip open the caps and turn the power off. Do not be Superman and try and be a hero yeah. and jump in the water. Because you're Kill gonna, the you're, power and then get them safely out of the water. Yeah, well, turn off the power... Throw them a flotation device. Yeah, well, if they're absolutely make sure that they have something to grab. But unfortunately, at the time, if their muscles are frozen because they're getting electrocuted and they're in a state of paralysis, yeah. you know, just shut the power down, get them afloat, get them safely out of the water. And so don't be swimming at the marinas and call nine one one. And I, I want to read a yeah. You have an awesome article there. Yeah, this this, and I'm going to read it for verbatim because it's 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 really interesting. As little as ten milliamps that's one fiftieth the amount used by a 60 watt light bulb can cause paralysis and drowning that is a very small amount of current and that's that, very, yeah it, you know impacts your muscles where you can't swim and, and save yourself yeah and when a boat when a boat is Holy physically man. plugged into shore power some of the boats have 50 amps, some of them have dual 30, some of them have single 30s. <laughs> so you're going to have 30 amps of current going through the water if something's hot and live. So that, that's a big deal. And, and you know, so and bottom line, just don't, and we and when we see people swimming, I, I'm I'm the first one. Get out of the water. What's the matter? You, you, you have any idea now? And marinas are required to put up a, you know, no swimming at a marina. Uh, but for, for folks who are thinking about doing it or, or have seen people. Please tell them to get out of the water. Don't do it. All right, so folks, we've we've uh, we've hit the end of our uh, our podcast again. I think we've provided some good information. You tonight. think? I don't think. I know. No, it is. We it's cover good some stuff. awesome information, um, and we tell it out. We, listen, we, we got to be honest and forthcoming about it, and and we got to pay attention. We do because accidents can happen on the water very quick. Very they can. Quick. They can. So know what to do. Do your homework, do a little uh, little research, and, and make yourself a better better captain and a better boater for the souls you have on board. Absolutely. Captain Buzz standing by on 6-8. Buzzy, you have a good night. I am Paulie's out.